Hello, and welcome to another episode of Something Something Chat Show with Tom Jr. Jackson presents After the Movie Review, episode eight, uh, 13, Blind Date. Um, before we begin, please check out Consider Fandom on YouTube. Uh, the channel is ran by RM, and she does a very extraordinary channel, and it's one I enjoy. She does unboxing, movie reviews, watch-alongs, and the apex of her channel is Sunday Morning Brunch Live with RM and her co-host. Um, Russ Whitfield. And that's every Sunday morning live on the Positive Fandom Network, or channel, I should say. And it starts at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. On to the review. The movie we're reviewing today is Blind Date. It is one of the most underrated uh, Bruce Willis films, I think. Uh, it doesn't get mentioned a lot, and there are reasons. There's a reason why it's it's really his first movie. It's actually his first movie, and his first credited film role that he's ever had like big time um oh, excuse me so blind date is about a workaholic who's played by bruce willis and at the job he works at um he needs a date for a dinner with an, an important new client and he calls, first of all, he goes to see his brother, who's played by the late, great Phil Hartman. And I think this is one of Phil Hartman's early movies as well. So his brother, excuse me, his brother, says, I can fix you up with a woman. And she's a great woman. She's really nice looking. And Bruce Willis is like, no, I'll, I'll take my chances at finding someone. So Bruce Willis goes home, calls every woman he knows. They're either busy or dating or married. So he breaks down, calls his brother, says, hey, tell me about this girl. And he's like, she's beautiful. He goes, oh, come on, don't lie to me. And the brother's like yelling to his wife, uh, tell him that she's beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. She's nice. She's charming. And he goes, she's beautiful. And then she goes, the uh, brother's wife says, don't get her drunk because she goes wild. And he puts it as, don't get her drunk because she likes to get wild. You know, making it sound sexual in a way and stuff. And uh, he gives him the address of where to pick her up. And they go. He goes to pick her up, and it turns out he gets there, and she's still getting ready. And just as she's about to walk out, the lights go out. And she was asking him to help him take her 
asking him to help her take her luggage with them because she's going somewhere else and not staying where she is. And so he likes a match to see how she looks and it turns out it's Kim Basinger who comes with a set of instructions of, you know, don't do this because she'll go wild. And so they go out for dinner and stuff like that. There is a supporting character in this movie. And it's played by John Larry Cat. And if you don't know who John Larry Cat is, John Larry Cat was a Klingon in Star Trek Three. He was Dan Fielding on Night Court, and he's going to be on Night Court again when the revival comes to Peacock, I believe. And he was in a movie called Madhouse as well, and which is a great movie. It's um, John Larroquette and I believe it's Christy Alley. If you have not seen, no, it's not Christy Alley. I think it is Christy Alley, but it's not Christy Alley. It's, it's another woman. Maybe it is. Anyways, before I go down that, is it this person is that person who wrote, uh, wrote uh, find the movie Madhouse and watch it. It's a crazy movie, but it's fun. Now, um, his role in the film is very funny, kind of over the top, but he's great in this film. Very great. Um, I won't say who he plays, but it amps up the comedy in the film. And and don't get me wrong, Blind Date was made in 1987. Okay, and that's when Bruce Willis was first on screen, meaning big screen, um, big screen role. And I believe at the time he was starring in Moonlighting with Sybil Shepherd. Which, why is that not streaming? Because Moonlighting is one of the greatest shows. It's a really great show. It, it, it's, it's a very much an 80s show, but feels like a four, some, something that could take place in the 40s with the wit and the banter between uh, Willis and Civil Shepherd. But I digress. Um, at one point in this movie, um, in the office of Bruce Willis's character, there's a big picture window. And outside that window, you see a building. And that building uh, turns out to be none other than Na the Nakatomi Plaza building, which, and just to say, this movie was made in 86, came out in 87. So in about a year from when this movie was made, that building was going to become famous worldwide in a little film called Die Hard. Now, it makes me wonder, did that movie, Die Hard, become a big movie? I think we all know the answer to that one. Um, Madonna was offered the Kim Basinger role in the film, but turned it down because the director Blake Edwards, who directed such films as it's a, uh, a fine mess with uh, Ted Danson and Howie Mandel. He directed Victor Victoria. He directed a lot of the Pink Panther movies as well. And he directed this one. And he, she turned, Madonna turned it down because Blake Edwards refused to cast Madonna's 
um, then husband Sean Penn in the Bruce Willis role. And she said, I thought I had approval of director and lead actor, and they didn't tell me they um, already hired Bruce Willis. And that's why I turned it down. This is Madonna's words. I may be paraphrasing. That's basically what it was. And it kind of makes me, hearing this, it makes me wonder how Sean Penn would have turned out in this movie. And, and would, have it, would it have been funny? Would it have been the movie that it is now? It would have been a totally different thing, maybe. Who knows? But that's pretty cool when you can hear about a movie and hear who's almost in it or who they were considering for this. So, yeah. Um, there's a club that Bruce Willis goes into. And at one point, the, the bouncer was going to be played by Andrew Dice Clay. And Andrew Dice Clay was offered it three times, turned it down. And had he taken it, he would have never gone and done stand up. He never would have been seen by the man who is his agent now, and he never would have sold out. Shows that he ended up selling out. So the bouncer in the movie got the role, and that is Dick Duroc, who, for all you cult movie fans, is Swamp Thing. It's amazing, huh? Swamp Thing. And that's another great movie that needs a either a Criterion release or a Arrow video release with great special features, maybe some good commentaries as well. That's a movie that I would love to see re-released and, and done in a great way. Because that's a when I, that was one of my favorites um, growing up was watching Swamp Thing, which was directed by Wes Craven at the time. Uh, I, I would like to say, in my opinion, that uh, wrapping this up, this is a great film. And it's a great film as a date night film. So you, if you, uh, are looking for a great rom-com, a great date movie, something funny, something romantic. This is the movie. Uh, it's an un it, and it really is, as I said before, an underrated movie that Bruce Willis is in. And Kim Basinger is perfect in her role in this film as well. Uh, normally she has blonde hair. She has uh, like a brunette type look to her hair in this film as well. And it, it, it's an enjoyable film. It really is. It's very funny. And as I said before, John Larry Cat is just one of those guys who plays these supporting character roles that are very funny. Like if you watch Stripes, the Bill Murray movie Stripes. John Larry Cat is in it, and he doesn't eat up the background. He he plays this movie. He plays the role he does in that movie. Very very funny. And he he's been around for a long long time. Great actor. Uh, one of my favorites as well. So I want to thank you for watching this review. As always. Uh, in the description below, there's a, a link for the channel I mentioned, Positive Fandom. Watch it, come join us every Sunday morning. And I say us because I am the moderator for the live chats in, on that channel. So come join us, join the conversation. If you have a, a YouTube link, uh, channel or a Instagram channel, let us know the name of that. Let us know the name of your Instagram feed and we will promote it for you. So, 
I, I want to say thank you to whoever is watching these videos as well. Thank you very much. It, it means a lot. Um, I want to say that a lot of people sometimes ask me, why, why do you not use pictures from movies or put actors into your thumbnails? And I do it because I want to be original and not like everyone else and have some still from a movie, some celebrity from a movie or, or something like that, something that might get me struck with a copyright striking. I, I don't want that. I I just like being creative and I like working on the thumbnails. It takes me a while, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Depends on how much effort I put into a thumbnail for these videos. And I love doing it. I love doing the, 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 the thumbnails. I love making these videos. And I'm very happy that you liked, subscribed, commented on these as well. So I thank you, the viewer, the subscriber. Thank you for making me this little channel of mine that's really not much, but it's something. Uh, something worthwhile. And as I, as I said before, interviews are coming. I'm trying to set some things up to get some interviews. This is a chat show channel, but I also like doing a little bit more than that, like movie reviews, book reviews. There will be more book reviews as well. Um, I got a whole, I got a, uh, a link, a link. I got a playlist. All these are in playlists too. But there's a playlist of getting to know me. There's only one video there right now, and it's part one of uh, getting to know me. And it's my part one of uh, my favorite YouTube channels that I like to watch. But there, there, there is more coming to this channel. And I thank you for watching. And as always, folks, remember this. We are all goof people. Thank you and have a pleasant tomorrow.